Michael Clark has got off to a great start in the second innings of this, his first ever Ashes Test match. Indeed, a strong performance from him should aid Australia's hopes for victory. Michael Clark, the young Australian Tyro in his Ashes Test debut, is aiming to make his mark on the hallowed turf of Lords. It's his first visit here and he went for just 11 in the first innings, trapped in front by Simon Jones and Plum LBW. A disappointing first innings by the Australians, who were bowled out for 190. Now the bowling attack, which is headed by Glenn McGrath, is required to strike back immediately against the old enemy. The players and the umpires are making their way to the middle for the start of play in England's first innings. There are Marcus Truscothic and Andrew Strauss, who surely are looking to build the base for England's total. You can bet your life that the new ball specialist, the master, Glenn McGrath, has other ideas. After an OK performance with the bat, Australia must be looking to rattle England with the ball. A combination of speed and spin is the best way to gain ascendancy in this test match. Ricky Ponting is about to make a bowling change. Yup, it's Shane Warne who's coming on to bowl his first ball of the innings. He'll bowl in tandem with Brett Lee. Now that's a useful combination for the Australians. Spin at one end and speed at the other as they look to make the breakthrough. With victory in Australia's grasp, the loss of top-order batsmen has suddenly made the task difficult. Warren and Lee are at the crease. Only two wickets are in hand. Can Australia win the second test? Australia in desperate trouble here at 177 for eight. As Shane Warren faces up to Andrew Flintoff. It is up to the Australian tail to pull off a miracle because for sure England can scent victory. Still a further 105 needed by the Australians if they're to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Australia have been outplayed in this third test. The top order are well below par, so can the tail end save face by preventing the follow-on? Adam Gilchrist has gone and Australia are struggling at 186 for six. Shane Warne and Michael Clark are together. They've got to rescue the innings and somehow avoid the follow-on. Warne looks in good touch. We can't rule anything out from him. Michael Clark, of course, is injured as he faces his first delivery from Simon Jones. Ricky Ponting's on 48 and looking good. If ever a captain's innings was required, now's the time for Ponting to do something special and get Australia back into the game. Australia are 135 for three. Ricky Ponting's unbeaten on 48, and he's the key to the whole thing. England, of course, desperate for quick wickets as they're pushing for victory. There's still a 288 difference between the sides, but it's the resolve of the Australian captain that could decide the whole afternoon. This is an unusual position for the Australians as they try to avoid the follow-on for the second time in the series. Five down, and things are looking bleak for them. What an amazing position for the Australians to find themselves in. They're 100 for five. They're trailing England by 377 after that collapse. 
and they still need another 178 to avoid what would be an embarrassing follow-on. They haven't followed on for an age. Adam Gilchrist and Simon Cadiger are at the crease, and a lot lies on their shoulders. England's top order collapse has opened the door for the Australians who surely thought they'd lost this test. Now they can attempt to claim victory as England still need 13 more to win. Geraint Jones is out then, trying to hit Shane Warne down the ground. That was a steady catch from Michael Kasprovich. The tail is under such pressure, still 13 needed to seal victory for England as Brett Lee starts a new over to Matthew Hoggard. Australia are proving just what a good and fighting side they are and suddenly they have a real chance of stealing this win away from England. Australia's opening pair, Justin Langer and Matthew Hayden, have failed to be anywhere near their best in the four previous tests. Now is their chance to put Australia in a commanding position in the fifth and final test. This pair of Australian test cricketers have made for a marvellous partnership over many years, but both have failed to capture their previous form in this Ashes series. So, they'll be looking to dig deep and lay the foundations for the Australians and their own futures in the Australian team. With the game well beyond Australia's reach as Matthew Hayden and Justin Langer approach the wicket, the question is, what if bad light hadn't come to stop play on the fifth and final day? Bad light and rain have dogged the Australians' efforts to get out there and have a crack at pulling off an incredible victory to tie the series and keep the Ashes from England. Here we go then. Langer and Hayden making their way out to the wicket as the English players and umpires are too. There's a target of 342 to win the game for Australia. Few overs remaining in the day. It'll take nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> 